Hello, my name is Aaron Cavanagh and I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of PostBurnout.com. PostBurnout.com is a culture website dedicated to venerating burnt-out artists the world over. This is our website's podcast where we publish full-length recordings of our interviews, which are sometimes the unedited versions of our site's articles and at other times our exclusives. If you're a returning listener, thank you for coming back, and if this is your first time listening, thank you for checking us out. We hope you enjoy and consider subscribing, giving the episodes a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, or giving it a rating if you're anywhere else. It really helps us out. Thank you. All right, in this edition of PostBurnout.com interviews, we talk with Mark Maloney and Aaron Murray of the new Dublin two-piece band Solar Blades. Their debut single, Shangri-La, released today, and we discuss the song, how the band came about, how the band differs from the two's previous project, Dog Day Afternoon, if they plan on incorporating any Dog Day Afternoon songs into their new set, working as a two-piece for the first time, and how that differs from any of their other projects, working with Dave at OFMG and Reese Davies on the song, and much more. How's it going, Sorry, man. Nice to see you again. There you've been. Oh, good. Oh, good, man. Yeah. Keeping on life again. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Working away. Yeah, man. Well, actually, I want to ask, just like jump straight in, just ask, like, uh, with Solar Blades, man, what was the kind of, um, I guess, what was the kind of uh, impetus for this project? Kind of like uh, the idea of um, uh, starting this project up? Um, I think it was in terms of when Dog Day split i suppose me and Aaron it says we're a bit at like a kind of like a crossroads of like what is next because we had no idea yeah you blatantly had literally no idea at all and then we initially met up for Aaron to do his practical for college oh yeah my music practical and while we were just rehearsing some songs that we had for dog day that he was going to use in his practical naturally two musicians you just kind of start to jam <laughs> and then the single we have coming up Shangri-La that was the first thing yeah, I first think thing. we thought of because we didn't think of this as like again which kind of in its own good way we didn't think of this like being like a project at all we we're just like oh that's a cool song we might do something with that yeah. and then we started just kind of jamming away on that and then from that I suppose spawns other ideas mm. as well and then we just started collecting like kind of more material as the weeks and months went on and now we kind of decided since it's kind of summer and we're both off for a while anyway, we this would be the perfect time to let the people hear it. And I think <laughs> another thing as well that was, um, I remember there was a point where, because you were, because st- you're starting to get good on bass now as well. I tried. Mark plays with Sauce Gang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cheeky little shout out there. Yeah. Um, and Mark sent me, I'd say maybe five different baseline ideas. And there was one that stood out to me. And I was like, we have to get that sorted now. And um, it was the. It turned out to be the baseline for Shangri La. Well, the base. I say the baseline. The the overarching kind of chordal structure. Um, and then we kind of just built around that as well. I suppose. I think uh, when it comes to our um process, Mark would generally be the main songwriter, and I will maybe decorate the song or turn it into a or an idea and turn it into a demo. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of how we work. I suppose best off each other. Yeah, definitely. Who's in the uh, the bands? Is it just you two guys, or are you working with anyone else? Just, yeah, just uh, just us. Yeah. Just us. <laughs> just us. Have you thought about how how the music kind of translates live, or would you use like kind of bad session musicians, or even like uh, I don't know, like uh, pre recorded drums, or how would you kind of translate it to a live situation? I guess for the we've done one gig so it was 10 minutes in a uh, smithfield creatives again give them a shout out at um, an open mic night and it was literally what we did in aaron's practical when we were rehearsing first like we would have used uh program drums off a laptop mm. to kind of help us out and we did that as well for the smithfield creatives gig like i'm one that i've never done that before so i was kind of i won't say apprehensive but i was a bit kind of like what if the computer goes no performance yeah. <laughs> later you know what i mean but um i think it worked out well i'd say maybe in the future we could definitely think about being bringing session musicians in but i think the main concentration for us at the moment is just to keep it between us two yeah and, and actually but, yeah. sorry no you're grand you're grand yeah i think no, i was just gonna say sorry <laughs> yeah, okay, you're, grand. We're, 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 we're grand you're grand 
No, I was just going to say, based on that, like, what was that like for the first time actually playing to, like, uh, pre-recorded drums? Because, like, you know, I, I don't know what that would be like, because I've never done it. Um, I imagine it's quite intimidating, too, because, like, you know, there's a human element against the kind of, like, perfect robot behind you. Uh, just, like, you know, how do you kind of um, account for that first is working with, like, an actual uh, real-life drummer who can kind of adapt to anything that may be going on? I think it's more of a case of... I suppose we just like the sound of the programmed drums. The electronic drums does go a little bit better live anyway yeah. um, as to um, the sound that we're going for as well. Um, and I, the more I think about it, like if we were to get a session drummer in, I don't think we would be playing live drums. We would be sample pad, if anything, um, just based on the sound that we're going for. Because I think an issue that we had with the Dog Day band is that we could never fully put down one singular sound. Mm. Um, we would always kind of like, I suppose, weave and duck and dive um, into not different, I won't say different genres, but there was never really a, a song that was like, okay, that's definitely Dog Day. You know, yeah. that kind of way. And I think that's what we're trying to address, I suppose, with this. And we're kind of using the, I suppose, the speed bumps from that project in this project and kind of try and make it as, I suppose as variety as possible as big variety as possible but also maintaining that 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 theme in a way yeah if that makes any sense yeah no no totally and actually um what i was going to ask is like when, when dog day um um ended uh obviously mark you you were with sauce gang uh aaron what were you doing and mark were you doing anything else uh other than sauce gang or uh was, was that your primary focus um i think yeah sauce gang was pretty much my focus for this I'm just going to be with you in one second. My dog has gone mental. <laughs> Take it away, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, so while Mark was doing Sauce Gang, I did have my other band as well, uh, Teletext. And we would have been together for since, I suppose, secondary school as well. So we've been going a long time as well. But we've been kind of in and out of, should we release this? Should we not as well? Because we used to go by the Valves years ago as well. Um, but it was kind of a case of like, maybe let's restart that as well. And again, it really just depends on what people like in terms of that specific genre as well. So you could make the best song in the world and it might, it just mightn't get any airplay. It mightn't get any streams as well. And look, in fairness, for her, we didn't put as much um, promo into it as maybe we should have, but I think the, I think, the fact that me and Mark are doing this now, I suppose that kind of exemplifies the need to want to do something else, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, like, put it this way, if we didn't enjoy the stuff that we're, the music that we were making and the, and, and, and if we didn't enjoy our time, each other's company, we, it, we wouldn't be doing it because we're, we're best friends and we like making music. That's just the stuff we like to do regardless of the streams so yeah there's, there's another question i'll just wait till mark is back because yeah, yeah, yeah. really... yeah, i am back ah, perfect. just one yeah, sec no. just have to move it to another room yeah no worries everyone else is coming in <laughs> hogging up the whole kitchen oh, oh my god oh. <laughs> i'm getting the the house for her you absolutely are hope you like it <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, sorry about that one. No worries. We're back. Yeah, no, the question I was, I was going to ask, like, uh, so, you know, from Shine Rilla, what I've heard of it, um, uh, it seems like, I think, uh, quite similar actually to the to the work you were doing in um in Dog Day Afternoon, you know I, I remember when we talked about that like you know you, you were mentioning kind of like um taking huge inspiration from kind of Django guitar of people like Johnny Marr and Peter Book, um yeah I was wondering like uh in from your perspective I mean how does the the music of of Solar Blaze kind of differ from what you're doing in Dog Day? Um, again, what kind of alluded uh what Aaron was saying earlier in terms of with Dog Day, it seemed that we didn't have a defined sound, that one song would kind of be different to the next. And obviously that could be great in its own right as well, having a variety within it. But I think for it being just us two, 
and uh, electronic drums, I think we can hone in on a sound that is, I, I suppose, shows us off a lot more in terms of, because with Dog Day, again, it's a band, with us, it's just us two. So we kind of have to up our own musicianship a lot in terms of songwriting, in terms of playing live. And yeah, I think that's how it kind of separates from Dog Day as well. And I suppose the, definitely the genre of which we're going for in terms of Dog Day being kind of like indie rock somewhat. And with this kind of leaning into more of our kind of pop sensibilities, very mm -hmm. much so because the influences for Dog Day and the influences for this project it's literally chalk and cheese. Yeah. Be like completely different. And I think it's good showing, I suppose, in this project, a different side of myself and Aaron that you probably wouldn't have heard if you went to a dog day show. I'd say a lot yeah. of people that kind of would see us now, they'd be quite surprised, which is kind of the best thing and the best thing about <laughs> you, you know? Who are the uh, additional inspirations that um, are, are seen in, in Solar Blades versus Dog Day? Like, um, why have you been kind of incorporating that into this project um, that you didn't into either you mentioned pop sensibilities, but in terms of like, I guess, reference points, who, who would they be? That's probably the big one is uh, the band Hers. Obviously, yeah. God rest ourselves. Yeah. Um, so, again, the two of us would have been really big fans of Hers, like even during Dog Day Afternoon as well. Um, but I suppose it was never really. Uh, we'd never really had the chance to implement like their style because it, it was dog it just it, it didn't really match the um yeah, yeah the, the vibe mm -hmm. but I feel like now we're able to slow things down a little bit or be a little bit more introspective especially with Shangri-La coming out in, um on Friday um mm -hmm. personally i maybe I'm biased I think it's some of Mark's best writing but uh look I'll <laughs> I'll hold my hands up here but I think Hers is definitely a big inspiration. We, yeah. I think we have a few, like, I suppose, I won't say 90s, but, like... Yeah, I think, like, in terms of, I think, bands with that kind of... Because, obviously, what we're going off is bands that would use, actually, like, program drums and that kind of thing as well, kind of looking for them for kind of inspiration. I'd say another one for me, is I'd say Steel Woozy. Mm -hmm. As an artist, I think... His definitely like his songwriting sensibilities and his production kind of style is something that I want to definitely hone in on with this project. Maybe absolutely. a bit of Steve Lacey as well. Like. Steve Lacey, absolutely. Yeah, like kind of, I suppose even with this band, there's a lot more, I suppose, modern influences of current great artists at this moment in time that we're really feeding off. And I think with Dog Day, maybe we are kind of looking at, I suppose, like early 2000s, early 2010s. Yeah, artists, rather than actually focusing on the great music that's coming out now. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like, uh, in in a way, it's like, uh, I don't know, kind of more contemporary, uh, contemporary, um, uh, influence, um, and and in general, I mean, like, and um, do you kind of like, I don't know, how, how do you think? Well, I guess you can't really say yet, but just in general, from from what you've you've seen, how do you find the the kind of reception to? Uh, Solar Blades differs from, say, uh, your other uh, projects or, um, again, like, uh, actually, Mark, when you were away, Aaron was kind of mentioned that, like, you know, a lot of that's kind of uh, irrelevant. What's, what's really kind of the primary focus is getting together with your mate and kind of, like, making something that you both want to create. Um, yeah, I was wondering how, how do you find the kind of, uh, I guess, uh, how, how do you think <laughs> um, this music will be perceived compared to, to other uh, projects you've worked in? I think it'll be kind of, like, Initial shock, I think, if I'm okay. being honest. <laughs> Honestly, I think so. Because with Dog Day, they had such that kind of, again, indie rock sound. Sauce Gang, it's like hip-hop, pop-punk. Yeah. You know, they're thinking, <laughs> what's this fella doing pop music? Like, <laughs> where's his head at? You know? So uh, I think the fact that the the novelty that it's just two people, if yeah, you get me, yeah. I think people might get the whole... I, th I think... Even with them, the whole Hall and Oates vibe, which again, I think there might, even though we're focusing on modern bands, we still have, yeah. I suppose, kind of maybe 80s influences, like definitely like Hall and Oates. And Tears for Fears. Tears for Fears well. as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gotta I, pay homage. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the very fact that it is only two of us, my, I don't know, you're, again, you're able to showcase your, your musicianship. You've no like live drums or lead guitar to hide behind as well. So you have to play your part. And your card has to be, I suppose, intricate as well as interesting enough 
to cap you have to make up for the fact that there's two less musicians if that makes any sense yeah. totally and um, uh, in general, I mean, um, when it comes to kind of um, the production side of things, I mean, um, are you guys uh, self-producing? Are you, are you working with external producers? And also, um, uh, Mark, when when I first talked to you, I, I asked you, like, what kind of uh, uh, producers would you kind of be, like, you know, dream scenario, who would you like to work with? And uh, I think you mentioned Butch Fig at the time. Um, and yeah. I was wondering, like, has, has that perception kind of changed? Like, is there other producers now that you're kind of bringing into the fold that you'd kind of uh, think would be more, I guess, appropriate for what you're doing now? Definitely. Like, in terms of um, who helped us out with Shangri-La, uh, David OFMG. Again, he's oh, yeah, yeah. unbelievable in terms of he helped us off in terms of like the early production, trying to get it off. Um, he was brilliant again, cause his own music kind of has somewhat of that feel, I suppose as well, working with electronic kind of elements. And we also brought in Reese Davies, who's a uh, sauce gang yeah. to help us out. <laughs> so again, he's just, I think he's an unbelievable um, engineer. So again, that's a working relationship. We want to keep on moving forward. But <laughs> yeah. again, we want, um to self-produce i think that's the main goal of ourselves like especially us as a duo mm. we kind of want to keep everything us between us as much as we can like again if we need help or people want to help out we won't be opposed to that at all but i think our greatest superpower is actually us being a duo mm. instead of looking at it that we don't have many probably too sh too many chefs in the kitchen mm -hmm. really if me and aaron are satisfied with something that's it mm. And I yeah. think with um David as well helping us um first of all recording I think because David used to, was the lead guitarist for um, Dog Day as well yeah so he knew our sound or what we would want to sound like pretty well regardless yeah um and I think that I th I think that definitely helped in terms of I suppose knowing what instruments need to go where and in terms of the arranging as well yeah definitely um, that was definitely a big help yeah actually um um. Uh, just um, just for clarity's sake, I mean, who who's playing bass and who's playing guitar in, in this project? So Aaron is on the bass, and then I'm on the guitar. But you're kind of uh, both uh, incorporating a bit, a uh, bit of both. Like um, as you mentioned, Marcus, yeah, you play bass in in Sauce Gang. Um, how do you find kind of I guess like, uh, Aaron's uh, playing style uh, differs from yours, and why do you find it um. I don't know what his base is more appropriate here because it, I believe like it could be an interchangeable thing if wanted, like both of you know how to play each instrument. So uh, what do you think it is about, and also Aaron for yourself, I mean, about yeah. kind of Mark's guitar playing, which is kind of appropriate for this uh, project? Well, firstly, I think Aaron is a way better bassist than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to put that out there. Um, I think it's because of Dog Day, really, that we were most comfortable with that kind of setup, myself on the guitar and then Aaron on the bass. And that's how we built up a lot of the chemistry in the early days with Dog Day. And I think it'd be a sh uh, for that to leak over to this project, I think it's great as well. But also, like the interchangeability of maybe Aaron to go on the guitar and me on the bass. I'd say that's definitely something we'd be looking at in the yeah. future, mm. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just in general, I mean, what, how do you think that your uh, playing styles kind of differ uh, on both bass and guitar? Uh, for me, with guitar, I think I'm more focused on, I suppose, the melodic side of things. Because I suppose with Dog Day, what I looked at in terms of my own guitar playing, I was just looking at try, how can I bring the most energy out of this instrument as possible yeah. to try and encapsulate that live because we're kind of going for kind of a rock sound so i wanted people to really feel the energy that was coming off the guitar but for now i think i'm more um intricate with it in terms of maybe chords that i'm choosing or i suppose the different um effects that i would actually have on the guitar itself yeah we're not going for any distortion like the, the distortion <laughs> pedal is packed away yeah it's game over we're bringing out the chorus pedal yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that, honestly, that's probably the biggest difference to me without, without a lot of distortion. Yeah, that's a big one. But I think with this, I suppose again, as we we said earlier, I think my musicianship, especially on the guitar, I think has to go up a level, yeah. and I'm absolutely wanting to do that to again bring these songs to life as they should be. Yeah, 
actually there's a lot more obviously space to fill now um with yeah, just the two of you guys and the machine i mean uh what's that actually daunting then to kind of have like one guitarist less um in the project in a way yeah in a way uh, yeah i think yeah having one guitarist less than what we're used to is something we do like i suppose need to get over but at mm -hmm. the end of the day the band itself is only one single guitarist yeah. so that is what the sound is going to be mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. if we have guitars if we have any more than one guitar it's only got it will be put in maybe a backing track of some sort but whether we really need it's only going to be there if it's really really needed if it needs to fill up space if it needs yeah. to accompany mark as well if it needs to I don't know, go in between maybe the bass and the um guitars and the drum or on the drums as well. Um so it's a case of for I suppose for only when it's needed. Mm -hmm. mm. So because the sound itself is yeah, it is you on the guitar. Yeah. And I think again, just keeping that element of it being myself and Aaron. I think that's something that we want to keep an integral part of this project. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so I think too many things in the actual tracks themselves. I don't know. I think it, it could take away from the overall aesthetic that we want to present throughout mm. all the different songs that yeah. we're going to have. And yeah. that's a big thing as well. I think in terms of our songwriting, it is very simple, not because we want it to be, but I suppose it almost has to be. Mm. If that makes any sense, I think. Yeah, but that... I'd say Aaron's bass lines there more than simple. No, oh, it's just... <laughs> absolutely <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Sweetness. <laughs> My ego is going to be through the roof now. <laughs> It's all just open E. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, and, and that's 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 you know another thing I think to 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 kind of consider. I mean, like you know, obviously. Um, you know, when it comes to kind of production, I mean, there has to be that consideration too for how, because like if you layer things too much, I mean, then it's just like kind of, uh, um, you know, you can't replicate it then live. It becomes yeah. kind of uh, impossible. So, yeah, I mean, do you find that, um, you know, again, these were something that like once the kind of dynamic of like, okay, it's going to be two of us in the machine. Once that kind of dynamic was established, you then thought about what that was going to look like at a production standpoint, or uh, was it just kind of like once you kind of got in and start recording the tracks, then you made considerations for these things or how kind of, I guess, like, because it, it seems like um, from, from what I'm gathering, the actual, um, the formation of the band was kind of, uh, uh, you know, very gradual and not like something that was really premeditated. It was just something that no. kind of um, was born out of circumstance. Um, yeah, so I was wondering now that it's established, um, how much consideration are, do you have for kind of future plans or are you just kind of going with uh, instinct and what kind of makes sense at a given time? Um, I, th I think definitely, like, because our big point as well, like we have the single coming out on the 7th of June hmm. and we've only done a 10-minute gig. That would have been, again, alien to us before even with dog day because again we didn't even have a lot of material out on streaming services or anywhere really so i think our big goal with this is honestly releasing a lot of music mm, to, yeah, yeah we have a we have a lot of demos as well and i yeah. think that like that's our actual process yeah. that mark comes up with the song in terms of if he puts a few chords together puts a few um verses and choruses together as well you mm. send that to me. I'll decorate it with bass and drums, and maybe if there's a synthesizer or an extra guitar that's needed, I'll throw that in as well. Yeah. We'll see how we feel about that. See if something needs to be added or something needs to be taken yeah. out, and then we'll bring that to the studio. And then that's, I suppose. So it is. We do have a set process, which yeah. I think is a, it is quite hard to come by. You know, Definitely. for especially for like I suppose other bands, especially even for dog day. Dog day, yeah. Like the demos we we've, we've made, they're fairly fleshed out. Hmm. Like the, a lot of it of what we have in those demos, again, like sound wise, arrangement wise, it's probably going to be there when we release it. Because again, it's quite how we work. Like it's very seamless. It, it um comes together quite naturally which is great as well. And also I think it comes down to if myself and Aaron, if we like it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's it, really. For better or for yeah. worse. <laughs> <laughs> but we're both very easily amused as well. So oh, we, yeah. we, we hear a song, we're just like, yeah, no, we're putting that, we're putting that, do that, do that right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, this was something I was talking about with, um, I, f- I forget who I, I was mentioning to, but I was talking with another band about like, uh, oh, it's pretty limited. And I was talking about like uh, how they have kind of like a backlog of songs, but then they'll write a new song and then they fall in love with that. And then that kind of gets pushed to the forward. Do you guys kind of have uh, that kind of thing too? Where it's like we have, you know, potentially uh, a back catalog of songs that we have, but like then, you know, and that's, uh, I think it happens to every musician where you kind of just yeah, yeah. discover yeah. something new, fall in love and you're like, I'm putting my focus on this yeah. uh, rather than letting it ferment, I guess. Is, is that something that you guys uh, are, are thinking of too? Yeah, no, we we've stopped writing, <laughs> we've stopped writing for for a bit anyway, because yeah. we're because we have a good few demos and we're like we need to get this done. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like if we start writing again, those I'd say we have about a solid maybe ten demos. Yeah, like, so solid. Yeah, um, and that's not counting the half demos we have as well. Yeah, I think that I don't know if we were to start writing more. I feel like the demos we have would be too good to go to waste if that makes any sense i agree yeah i think as aaron said earlier that we're easily amused and I mean, as well as you were saying if we write another song then we're like oh yeah all our focus is going yeah, on yeah. instead of the other songs <laughs> that are good as well <laughs> so yeah it was because it's hard as well because sometimes you like pick up a guitar and you're like oh that's something <laughs> that's something yeah. there but just like i suppose <laughs> keeping little idea have at the back burner I'm focusing on the ones that we have fleshed out. You can work on these. And when we're done with that, and I think when we finish demoing and all the different stuff with those songs that we already have, I think that will better inform us of what we need to do following on. Yeah. Instead of constantly jumping from thing to thing. So as soon as we get all these like demos and all sorted, yeah, it will inform us a lot more on what we should do or what we need to do going forward. Perfect. And I guess uh, one other thing I'll just ask before I, I talk about the, the debut single. Um when it came when it came to the kind of uh, the establishment of the songs for this project, um, are they all like brand new or is there songs that you're incorporating from Dog Day or um, you know, how's that kind of work like the the songwriting process? Is there any kind of like incorporation of, of songs from the previous band? Yeah, definitely. I think because with Dog Day, because of the the lack of material we actually had out on yeah streaming services again me and Aaron were kind of talking about we we were saying be a shame for those songs just to not get their light of day or not to be released but again we'd only kind of choose songs that would suit this format like we wouldn't say that's that was a really good song for dog day so therefore it's gonna be a really good song for us Mm. yeah we're fairly nitpicky on what songs we should pick for this project but again the greater emphasis is us writing songs together, having a lot more new songs. Mm. Yeah. A lot more new songs. And yeah. I think with a lot of the Dog Day songs, they just wouldn't translate well. Like, no. he, like not even just in terms of the vibe, but in terms of, like, just there's, there's two of us. Yeah. Compared to four of the Dog... Like, there are one or two songs that translate really well. We have actually one or two demos now. Hopefully yeah. going to have... Yeah. Maybe the second single. Possibly. No. <laughs> But um, yeah, I because again the same the dog day is myself, Aaron, David, and Shay, as well. I think to keep that purity of some songs that are there, that unfortunately probably will not see the light of day is unfortunate. But we're kind of I suppose just using this somewhat as well to get those songs out that we think would work really well. So that's it, really. The songs that work really well with Dog Day, we're gonna try implement them here but the ones that they're definitely some dog day songs yeah. that are absolutely <laughs> not a chance and not be done with two people not a chance and again it would lose them some of those dog day songs that were great it was the magic of those other people mm. of yeah. shay and david so yeah. it'd be yeah it just couldn't work not a chance yeah couldn't work fair enough um yeah, yeah then when it comes to uh general loud your first uh single it's coming out friday uh i guess by the time this will go up it'll be the day i will try to get it out on the day yeah, um, but when yeah. when it comes yeah so let's just say it's out today <laughs> what was the kind of the impetus for uh for the project i'm uh, sorry for the for um releasing the the um for choosing this song as the first um uh sort of release of the, of the project i would say we've been sitting on this song for nearly a year now 
I would just stop. I'd say I'd say it's been <laughs> well, okay, maybe less than a year, but about yeah. nine months. Yeah. Like I think it was just a case that we actually had to take the finger out and just mm. straight up just knuckle down, release it, get it recorded. And it's a case of trying to find it was it was a case of trying to find our process, but now that we've actually found it, I feel like we we'll, it won't take a year for the next song. If you get me, it should only no, help you take no, a couple of weeks. I think I think we are kind of using that time when we when we used to meet up kind of gradually uh to get other songs ready. Because our big thing is like after we release this single, we want to just keep going, keep churning oh, them yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the reason we chose Shangri-La first is I think because it, it was the first song yeah. we really came up with together and we were like, this is this is a good tune. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is a really good tune. And I think the kind of the chorus, like the the sing along aspect mm-hmm. of the chorus. I think will help a lot as well. Like it kind of just sounded like a single as soon as we wrote it. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah, and I, I think it perfectly kind of sets us off on the vibe that we really want to go for, the aesthetic that we're looking for. I think Shangri La itself, I think sums sums it a lot of it up. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, perfect. And then what's the release schedule then for uh, the follow up singles? Like, do you have that in mind? Like, okay, it's going to be you know, uh, every so many months or what? what's the kind of uh, idea then? I think we're going to try every six weeks. Yeah. If not yeah. every every two months. Yeah. Every six, eight weeks. Yeah. We're in the round that we're not going to be, I suppose, strict about it, but yeah, whatever happens, happens. But we know? do want it to be quick enough as well. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. we still kind of have to establish ourselves as well. Because again, it's the, the project for people to know it's only about is it three weeks old. Three weeks old, yeah. Three weeks old. You know, so for us to really establish ourselves, I think we've got to get material out and to gig also. Do you find that you get um, a knockback from uh, the other projects you're in? So, for example, like, you know, we were mentioned uh, Teletext and we mentioned Sauce Gang and the Port Sog Day. Do you find that um, there are people who kind of um, uh, stick with you through that? I mean, obviously you have friends and so if you are going to, you know, stick with you, and check out your projects but uh just in terms of like i guess the kind of uh the actual followers do you find that um you see people kind of uh coming along to different projects no matter how kind of varied they are um yeah i would say so mm. I, I i yeah i think in terms of the people that i i've shown the song to they would have liked because a bit of a lot of people we know they'd be into a, a variety of music as well mm. so that yeah. does help a lot but I, I think because we're only a new band we need to prove ourselves as well I wouldn't like someone just to like us just for the sake of it just because oh he's a mate or whatever I, mm. like we really have to prove ourselves in terms of yeah we we want to release good music yeah and yeah I think definitely for the people that are fans of Sauce Gang Teletext mm. Dog Day I'd say especially with Dog Day because again it's two former members in it yeah that there's always going to be somewhat of that dog day sound in the band regardless regardless yeah. because it's again two members in the chemistry you kind of build up towards that um in terms of teletext I, i'd say you can speak for yeah that. i don't know i think especially with dog day sauce gang and teletext they were they all would have been very like heavy in in a way that it would have needed maybe like a distortion sound. You people yeah. might be able to maybe mosh or whatever like that. This is a completely different, yeah, completely different vibe. Whatsoever. We want them grooving. We want them grooving. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So let's say we, again, we always would have helped each other out. We always would have given each other support gigs. We always would have soft gang featuring Dog Day or whatever like that yeah. in the same in the same. Like, don't think we're going to be able to rely on that now because of the sound is so different. If yeah. You want a support gig. You want a sim maybe a similar enough sound band with a lot of energy. So we're gonna it's again that's another thing we're gonna have to overcome. Yeah. Um, but we do we again we do have a lot of friends that will come to the gigs regardless, you know. Yeah, which is lovely, which is really, really nice. Yeah. We're very privileged to have that. Yeah. Um, but it's again, we we're, we're gonna have to create our own fan base, realistically. Yeah. And actually just uh, talking about that, I mean, what sort of um why are you kind of implementing in terms of actually trying to uh, draw attention to the new project? I mean, obviously, you know, social media like Instagram is kind of the big thing. I assume TikTok, maybe, I don't know. Um, what, what are you actually kind of, uh, um, I guess, what's the plan to kind of get um, eyes and ears on, on Solar Blades? So I think 
because I'm managing the Instagram now and the TikTok's going to go live, I'd say, within the week. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're just not taking ourselves too seriously is the main thing. Because yeah. if, if you're to look at some of the, like, again, some of the photos and the promos we're uploading, we're, it's, it's not Shangri-La in the background. We've had Cascada every time we touch in the background. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Monaco by Bad, or Bad Bunny. Um, yeah. Like it's just again stupid stuff, but it like it's just it's so <laughs> funny. And it will stick with people. Uh, hopefully, it will stick with people. Yeah. That kind of way. But also sh show us that kind of side of us as well. Yeah, you know, like because we just don't take a yeah. lot of things too seriously as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, yeah. like, like it's like we're not curing cancer here, but it's yeah. good yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we do, we will have the music video out hopefully with maybe within a week or two after the single release as yeah. well. But again, that's just filmed off our phones. The two of us, it completely impromptu filmed a couple of days ago let's just go around start dancing in yeah. the middle of i've seen promos of it on the instagram page yeah, yeah. 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 and that's the <laughs> that's taken off an iphone camera the lighting is completely terrible like the camera angles are completely terrible but i think we're being able to feed into that kind of like i don't know it gives it a little bit of charm or something i think so yeah and i think yeah it just shows as aaron was saying like the I suppose we take the music and like what we release like seriously enough mm. most all the other stuff like it's it's all like candy commercial kind of stuff like you know what i mean like it's yeah it's just it's promotion it's just <laughs> yeah I, i'm not like the best at promoting myself as well no wonder he, he's in charge of the instagram <laughs> but uh no like it really is that like we we want to present kind of the aesthetic of it's again nice jangly pop fun music yeah, it's fun. I it's think that's fun. the main yeah. takeaway from the whole, like, what the type of music we're trying to do. It's just fun. fun. It's lighthearted and it, introspective in a way, but like not, that, but it doesn't take itself too seriously either, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I guess one of the final things I'll ask is um, when it comes to kind of uh, live opportunities, what sort of um, things are you kind of like looking to do? I mean, obviously, I imagine playing around the clubs around Dublin that you've Played before probably like soundhouse workmans etc um yeah. but just generally i mean like um you know you were kind of mentioned that like the the um vibes are very different in, in this band compared to your other projects is is that in a way kind of an open door to kind of go actually maybe instead of going to these like promoters and these fest uh, and these festivals and these kind of shows that we have in, in the past we can maybe try and do these kind of festivals or these kind yeah. of shows instead yeah. it kind of uh, gives you uh, a new avenue um, yeah, I was wondering, like, um, when it comes to kind of live shows, what are you doing? Um, what, what do you have planned for that, I guess? 100%. Like, I think that is kind of the allure of this project as well, is that we can dip our toes into different waters that we literally yeah. could not have done before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of, like, it's... Because, uh, again, yeah. like, I feel like if it's not heavy, if the music that we'll, we're gigging with or the bands that we're gigging with on the night aren't too heavy, I feel like we'd fit in pretty well regardless yeah. of the genre. Like, I mean, there is, I suppose, like, there is elements of indie rock in the stuff that we're doing as well, but there's also elements of dream pop. There's also elements of, I don't know, kind of danceability, a li little bit of disco as well, like, based on some of the demos that we have, like, in the in the works anyway. Yeah. Um, more grooving than anything else. Like, I mean, we wouldn't be out of place at maybe a, an R&B session or a hip-hop session as well, like, you know? Yeah. Um, like, yeah. Like, I think for us, it's just support shows. Yeah. So again, anyone listening, here's a support thing. <laughs> you can contact us. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Check out your Instagram page. Yeah, absolutely, um, man. Yeah, and actually, just a, the, this is uh, my own sort of nerdy uh, interest, but I was wondering, actually, when it comes to um, uh, playing to, uh, uh, you know, uh, a recording uh, drum, I was wondering, how much does that actually kind of dictate um, the capabilities of what you can do live? Because, you know, you're playing to a set BPM, you know, um, and again, like also we're kind of mentioned sometimes, like if something can screw up uh, live, you know, the drummer can, if it's an actual drummer can kind of like, you know, react where, you know, the beats just kind of keep going. Um, so I was yeah. wondering how does that kind of um, dynamic change things? I think it's just a case of we have to be like, yeah, yeah. as as tight as we physically can while like there's only so much you can do if your laptop crashes on stage and I, like, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen it live happen to bands before and it's the worst thing in the world yeah like uh, there's actually um a video of like i think it was daddy freyer um i think a couple of maybe last year or whatever like that big festival and the laptop just decided nah not mm. happens so they had to do a whole reboot it for like half an hour i think but it keeps us on our toes it keeps us on our toes i think that's the main thing because again if it's the kind of live music elements like something or like whatever can happen which is great too 
again that freedom of um expression like if it's all just kind of four people but i think again for us it's a completely new experience mm. with the backing track i think it's more of us keeping us on our toes and again being very conscious of what we're projecting out there yeah. as well yeah just for us to be a bit mindful and obviously there'll be times for us to uh, have a bit of fun on stage i'm not going to doubt that <laughs> We do because we have a, we do a look again. We yeah. do have a lot of chemistry on stage as well. Yeah. Just for again for two people, mainly because we're two sides, I suppose, of the same coin. Like yeah. we both mm-hmm. like the same music. We both have, I suppose, similar enough personalities as well. And we both, I suppose, we're both just, I don't know, really easy going. I don't yeah. know. We just like anything. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great to see. Yeah, uh, someday. You know, you have to cancel the show because of a software update or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, wait, like no one else will probably just be screw the machine. We're playing. <laughs> <laughs> just get someone. Just get like a third mic and just get someone to you know. Verbally, yeah, exactly. Just verbally do the beat. Um, I write that down. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, guys. Um, is there anything you guys would like to add before we wrap up? Or yeah, uh, Shangri La is coming out seventh of June. Um, we are really... today a time of publication. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, Shangri La. Today, today, on today, <laughs> on, today, <laughs> today <laughs> on all yeah. stream services. Um, yeah, to check us out at Solar Blades, um, on Instagram, Solar Blades Band, Solar Blades Band, Band. Band. Okay. Solar Blades Band on uh, Instagram. What time is there? We'll have us on TikTok. That's that's all the social media we have, I isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think that's all we really need. We're not doing Twitter or Facebook because, yeah. yeah but yeah um, Shangri-La uh, June 7th we're really proud of it and I hope big shout out to it. Dave OFMG and Reese Davis as well who yeah. uh, both produced and uh, mixed the track as well yeah so um, yeah because they did a phenomenal job on it so yeah, yeah I think this is a supposed start of a new era yeah literally again we're, we're I think the main thing with us is like we're going to figure it out as we go and enjoy it while it goes on really mm. you know perfect yeah. and uh, yeah thanks guys it's really nice talking with you guys again thank you for listening to that episode of postburnout.com interviews we're an independent venture run by yours truly and as i said at the beginning liking rating subscribing and sharing really helps us out a lot if you're feeling extra generous we do have a paypal donation link in the episode description but don't feel obligated of course we've also begun releasing occasional exclusive episodes on spotify so subscribe there if you'd be interested in hearing those thanks again for listening and see you next time